Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on your time zone. My name is Sherry with Seeds for You, and I'm coming to you today with a, little, a bit of a different message. Um, during my prayer walks, I have an opportunity to uh, walk three days a week, and I call it my prayer walk because I use that time to pray. Okay, and uh, so during my prayer walks, it occurred to me as I was thinking that I don't really see very many deliverance ministries anymore. And I don't know that we have them still. Perhaps we do. Uh, we're just now starting to come out of a pandemic where the world is actually starting to open back up again. So I don't want to say that we don't have them anymore. I'm just saying that I haven't witnessed any deliverance ministries uh, lately. And so it's been weighing on my mind pretty heavily lately and partially because I think about the different times when people uh, are operating in wrong thinking. Wrong thinking can really lead you down a dark path. And so that's basically what I want to talk to you about today. But before I do that, I want you to watch this. Hi, I'm Sherry. Check out my new video and be sure to watch all the way to the end so that you don't miss any valuable information. Subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell so that you're the first to know whenever I upload new videos. And if you find value in this video, like, share, and be sure to comment below to introduce yourself. All right. Happy watching. <laughs> Thank you very much. So, um, from thinking, uh, I have some scripture that I would like to start off with first of all, and uh, it's coming from 2 Corinthians 4, 3, verses 3 and 4. So you can take notes of that if you don't have your Bibles uh, before you. Uh, that Again, that scripture is uh, 2 Corinthians 4, verse 3 and 4. And it reads as follows, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost in whom the God this is a small g so that means that it's not talking about our father in heaven in whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ who is the image of God should shine upon them all right I want to just give a little brief prayer before I go any further Gracious and eternal Father, I want to thank you for this opportunity, uh, for what you have dropped into my spirit, for what you have caused me to observe, notice, and to think on. And on today, Lord God, I hope that the listeners and the viewers uh, will have an open mind to this and that I will say something that will be clear and evident for them to uh, think on later on and to act on. Lord God, we thank you for another day. We thank you for all privileges and blessings and protection and provisions and all the things that you do for us on a daily basis that we may not pay attention to. But I do want to thank you. And I say this all in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Okay. So now the reason why I wanted to talk about wrong thinking is that sometimes, you know, people uh, may be well-meaning in their thought process and... People think that um, some of the things that they're doing or some of the things that they're saying or some of the things that they're thinking is really not all that bad. What they feed into their spirit, they may not feel like it's really all that bad. But all of this stuff has a meaning. It always does. Always does. Uh, we may not realize it at the time. Sometimes we may realize it later on in life. Or maybe someone will just um, give us clarity on these things at some point in time in our life. But the main thing is, is that oftentimes we may walk through life thinking that some things that we're doing, saying or thinking is okay. But the Bible teaches us that there is a way that seemeth right unto man, but uh, it leads us to death. The wages of sin is death. Okay, so some things may seem right to us, but in fact it really isn't. As a matter of fact, in my walk with Christ, the closer I got to God, the more I started realizing that some things in my life was not what I thought it was in terms of living a righteous life. Not that I was out there doing, you know, very simple things, but it's just that whenever you start to draw closer to the Lord, 
you start to find out that even some small things aren't what you think they are. So wrong thinking, wrong thinking can get us in a lot of trouble. And I want to also say this, that wrong thinking does not come from God. We know that the enemy is a liar. We know that he operates in the realm of deception. That's what a lie is. He, he operates in the realm of a deception. So a lot of things, uh, sometimes we feel like um, that it's not a lie when in fact it is. Anything that is untrue is a lie. Demons operate in various realms, okay? Uh, part of their characteristic would be to torment people. People feel tormented and, and, and tortured in so many words. And sometimes... Uh, what, what you have to understand about different demons is that they they come from somewhere and they have buddies who are attached to them. So if you feel that you're being tormented, then you're probably also feeling that you're being tortured. But maybe in your heart, you're harboring unforgiveness. So if you're harboring unforgiveness, there's a scripture that tells us that if you don't forgive, then you will be delivered to the torturers. Okay, so the torturers are demons. And there are all kinds of demons. There is a sleepy demon, which I refer to that often. I always say, oh, the sleepy demon was up on me. And then people may laugh and think it's funny. And sometimes I say it as a joke. But there is actually a sleepy demon. Okay, well, you want to, you, you might ask yourself, well, what does that mean? If you go to church, and you're sitting in church and you're trying to learn about God because you want to uh, get in a position where you can live for Christ, you know. And so you're there because, you know, uh, life has probably, you know, brought you to a point where you're kind of tired of the way you're living. And God has been dealing with you. He's been speaking to you and he's been drawing you. And now you finally made the effort to go to church and you're there. Then when you get there, you fall asleep. That is a sleepy demon working and operating in your life. Why? Because he does not want you to hear the word of God. If you hear the word of God, you may act on it and do something about your life. If you're not resting, that is a, it's, it's a demon that causes you not to rest. Where you toss and turn all night long. You can't sleep. You're up all hours of the night. You're on your phone. You're texting. You're on Facebook. You're, you're on your computer all night long. And you're neglecting yourself of rest. I've been guilty of this plenty of times. And then think about this. This is the sleepy demon. Okay, the demon will allow you to be up all night long watching things on TV or the internet that you shouldn't be watching. But then if you try to read the Bible, you become sleepy real fast. People often say that if you want if you want to go to bed, read the Bible. If you want to go to sleep, read the Bible. It'll put you to sleep. Then then there is uh, depression. And uh, depression a lot of times is self-defeating. And it's because you're thinking things in your mind uh, that are self-defeating. You know, like, oh, I never win anything. Oh, I'll never be able to do that. Oh, I'll never be able to have a job like that. You know, and then after a while, you, you just feel like um, you were destined for those things not to be for you. You know, and so you, you, you feel like it can never happen for you. So you never pursue them. You never try. And that is, uh, those are demons that are talking to you and telling you that you can't do that. But then he'll tell you to do something else. Um, you know, like, well, if you sell drugs, you know, that's fast money. You'll be able to afford shoes that you never could afford uh, on the salary that you make on your little penny any job or the job that they won't promote you on. You know, he gets in your ear and he starts telling you all of that. It's wrong thinking. That is wrong thinking. Or say this, you're in a, in a relationship with somebody and you actually met somebody who was a quality person and it's actually good for you in your life. But because you don't think that you're good enough or because you didn't get all the love that you thought you should have gotten as a child you don't know how to receive and accept love so the first little thing that happens in the relationship you go way off on the deep end you know or you accuse them of cheating on you when they're not like somebody can be planning a party for you a birthday party for you but it's a secret because they want to surprise you 
But the devil will tell you, oh, they're texting. They must be texting somebody. They must be cheating on me and all the things. And so now you're becoming abrasive to that person when they're really trying to do something nice for you. And it's wrong thinking. Wrong thinking has you that way. So you feel like they're cheating on you when they're not. And so you sabotage a perfectly good relationship because of the way you think and view things. But you don't have to live in that place. Let me tell you that. You don't have to live in that place. You know, just because certain things have happened in your life and caused you to be the way that you are, things that should not have happened, people mistreated you, spoke to you wrong, even molestation and all of these things. Yes, those things were bad. Those things were wrong. But you don't have to live there. You don't have to live there. You can be delivered from those things. But you have to make a conscious effort and tell yourself that this is not for me. I was not born to be defeated because God overcame the world for us when he died at the cross. And so we have uh, opportunities and we can experience good success. We just need to do things in the right way. So God can bless us. You know, but we have to turn to him. And so often we always turn to the wrong thing. We turn to another relationship. We keep thinking that we can fix the relationships by replacing them with new relationships. But if you haven't taken the time to heal, to be delivered, to do some self-examination on yourself and to try to figure out, you know, okay, well, maybe I made a mistake here and this is what I need to do going forward. You know, some people are jumping in and out of relationships instantly. You're not taking the time to heal. And when you go into a new relationship and you haven't healed from the last one, then it's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of time before this relationship ends as well. And so you keep adding salt to the wound because you keep on jumping in and out of relationships. That is not how you heal from a relationship. If you got hurt in a relationship... I'm sorry. We've all been hurt in relationships. But take the time to heal so that you can think clearly. Because when you haven't healed, wrong thinking steps in and it takes over. Okay? It takes over. A lot of times people go into new relationships and they make the new person pay for what the last person did. And it's because you didn't take the time to heal. Take the time to heal. Okay? And then I'm going to give you another example of wrong thinking and then I'm going to close. It's a little creepy to me, but some people can even find the good even in this, you know. So I'm not being judgmental. I'm just trying to help somebody. I want people to think right. When you think right, you live right, okay. Whether you know it or not, I don't know if you're paying attention to things that are going on in the world today. But we are leaning towards a more robotic world. Okay, uh, in some places, and I know exactly where this place is, but I don't know if I'm at liberty to actually name it uh, out. But they are building robots and um, for um, to staff at hotels and factories and things like that. And we know that technology technology is very sophisticated today. We realize that, and so. Um, Maybe this could be helpful in some places, but depending on how far they go with this, it could start to replace jobs for people because some of these robots are very sophisticated. And if you don't believe me, you can just do the research online and you'll see some of them and what they are capable of doing. And they're talking to them about self-awareness and all of this. So, um, I think the worst that could happen with uh, robots that are... Uh, working in that are being staffed at various types of businesses and industries and things like that is that they will replace humans and that will take jobs away from people but for the businessman they're looking at the fact that I can go and buy a robot to do the same job that humans do and I can come out on top because I can pay less for the robot uh, compared to how much it would cost me to pay a human in an entire year. So for them, it's a win-win. So that's one aspect. Then it, another aspect would be that some people are buying robots to have in their homes for various reasons. Like, for instance, they may have one there as a companion, one there as uh, as a uh, you know, like a maid that's washing dishes and keeping the house clean, etc., etc. And some people are pretty satisfied with that. Like one couple was talking about the fact that they got a robot because their daughter moved out. Like she moved out on her own and so they're empty nesters now and they are trying to fill a void. So instead of buying a pet, they got a robot. And the robot is 
reminded them of their daughter because they can conversate with them and then and then they're also able to do things around the house but the creepy thing for me is for those people who are buying those robots that uh, they're buying them for the for the purpose of having relations with them and so they can order these robots dolls uh, to order and uh, make them look the way they want to basically tell them what color eyes they want hair you know if they want full figured pregnant or not whatever I mean this is this is a true story they have brothels for this and everything so for me that's creepy for me that's wrong thinking if you think that a robot can replace human nature uh, you know a human relationship but for some of these people who are doing it it is doing that for them because some of the men who were brave enough to do the interview on those topics said well I don't have to worry about getting anybody pregnant and I don't have to worry about the emotional ties or that the relationship is going to end at some point and then you have to deal with that you know so for them it's a win-win but at the end of the day in all actuality for me you are dealing with a spirit you are dealing with the spirit and and but in this area where there are manufacturing these dolls uh many other people there believe that everything has a soul unliving things have a soul so this could be robots that they believe have souls and they are making these robots so sophisticated that they feel human-like they look human-like um they're beginning to have expressions where they can blink their eyes they can make expressions they can talk and answer you like siri and i don't know if you ever had a conversation with siri but if you say something that siri doesn't like she might get smart with you and so they're kind of using that uh with the robots for me that's wrong thinking to believe that i can have a healthy relationship with a robot a doll you know I, I just don't feel uh, let me not go too deep on that subject but anyway uh, I just want to stop by and talk to you about wrong thinking and if you feel that you are experiencing wrong thinking of any kind uh, try to be more conscious of it try to find other ways of thinking and especially if it's negative thinking because negative thinking is always going to take you down a dark road so you want to make sure that your thinking is clean and pure and also please be mindful of what you're feeding your spirit uh, be mindful of, of what's going into your ear gates and be mindful of what you're looking at with your eye gates all of these things bring things into your spirit so you want to be mindful of these things so keep your spirit clean keep your mind clean and uh, as I said think right live right and have a healthier life I want to thank you so much for joining me I hope you got something out of this video. Again, my name is Sherry with Seeds for You, where I sow seeds <laughs> on various topics and including spiritual, spiritually uplifting messages. Uh, if you haven't done so already, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Hit that notification bell so that you can receive notifications whenever I upload new content. And if you did get anything out of this video today, Please go ahead, like, share, and leave a comment for me to let me know that, uh, that you got something out of it. And if nothing else, to introduce yourself. I want to thank you again so much, and I'll see you here soon. Goodbye. Love you.